I thought I'd just get these ones out yeah. of the way first because these are the ones that are people who are like, oh, but what about this? What about that? So this is a bit of a culmination. Yep. This isn't one specific thing um, that I hear a lot and that I see a lot. Yep. So um, chronic dieting. Yes. Very, very common. I see this yeah. a lot. So some, when I say chronic dieting, I mean somebody that's maybe been dieting for 20 years, yo-yo is, dieting, yeah. trying every diet under the sun, mm. nothing works. Um, so that's very common. And obviously if you're, for one, not giving anything enough of a chance, which mm. I see a lot, someone might do something for two or three weeks and go, I haven't lost any weight. So mm. then they'll flip to the next thing and then flip to the next thing. Mm. That's never going to work. So, yep. um, uh, and obviously under eating. So if they're yes, dieting chronically, under eating, I see under eating a lot more than I see overeating. And wow. it's the whole mindset of I have to eat less and exercise more because mm. that's what we're told mm. through life. You just got to less going in and more going out and you'll lose weight. And that's just the, that's just and the that way And that could it is. work for some people depending on what's going in and depending on what exercise they're doing going that's out. That's right. And there's the key. For example, yeah. you know, and just to help on that point, um, overtraining. Imagine if you trained like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he's an old bodybuilder from the 70s, everyone knows him, but he was at the time overweight because he, he had loads of muscle. Yeah. The big bodybuilders today are very heavy men and yeah. women. They yeah. are overweight. Mm. So you actually go to the gym and you will put on weight. That's It'll right. It'll be muscle and everyone's happy with that. Yeah. But you'll put on weight. Yeah. Isn't exactly. incredible? Yeah, that's exactly well, right. What's the next one? Um, so I need to put my glasses on. So oh, I'm going to try and go it. through again without glasses. The, the next one's a classic. Yeah, so not logging everything you put in your mouth. Yes. <laughs> this is a classic one. So yeah. people who are, you know, they're really super strict and they're like, yes, but I, I eat really healthy and I diet and I'm dieting. and I'm, But, okay, so are you adding the sauces that you're putting on your food? Uh-huh. Are you adding the drink that you might be having, you know, like you might be having a latte or you might be have go out and have an alcoholic drink or something mm. like that? Um, cheat meals as someone goes, oh, yeah, but I'm I'm dieting, but I'm, it's my cheat day. Oh, they don't add okay. those calories. So that could send you over three, four, five hundred 500 calories a day depending Easy. on what you're having, if you're having sauces and things like that. And you that know, can make a massive difference. Like I ordered a salad and let's say we're out for lunch and I'm not ordered a salad and you've got your – Maccas and chips, and I'll just pinch a few of your chips. Yeah, and it's like, well, how much is a few? What are you talking about? Yeah. And it's got the terrible fats in it, trans fats, which which screw up your metabolism anyway. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and people don't count that. No, they well, don't. They'll splash it in sugary sauce. Yeah, that sort of thing. And look, oh. we're not talking about you know restrictive calorie counting. It's not what we. It's not what this podcast is about. But no. this is just an example of some of the regular things that we see that we want to get out of the way. And if someone is counting calories and they say, "But I'm having," 1,500 calories a day, which is very low, by the way. Yeah. But if you are, you could be having an extra three, 400 calories a day on top of just with incidentals that you're not even logging. So that's pretty common sure. as well. So um, take those out and you can actually see a massive difference. Right. What else? This is the classic. So I diet all week and then I splurge on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm super strict all week and I have my 1,800 or my 2,000 calories a day. Like, you know, mm-hmm. that's it. But then on the weekend, I might go, okay, I'm going to go out for breakfast or I'm going to have dinner with friends or something. So you might blow out to say 3,000 calories on that day. Yeah. But then you don't factor that into the rest of the week's calories. So so say you've got, you know, 10,000 calorie limit for the week mm. and you break that up. So people don't factor that weekend in. And that's pretty common as well. And that can definitely throw you off your your um, goals as well. So even just, a, you know, the old cheat meal. And I used to do it when I was competing or even previous and after. I'd have a cheat meal once a week, but it was a big cheat meal. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I was very lean, so it didn't seem to have too many problems, but it can do. So it mm. can definitely throw you over. So Well, also it can store uh, carbohydrates in your body as glycogen yeah. and um, in your liver and your muscles. Mm. So then you, on Monday when you go to the gym, you're just going to burn that off. That's right. So you're not going to start back on your weight loss. You've got to burn that crap off that you've built up on the weekend. Yeah, exactly. And you're kind of constantly playing catch up. So that's oh, a really common thing as well. That's a really common one. Yeah, this is another really common one that I see. This is all still the first, the first point. Yeah, this is still about. point one. Yeah, point one. Um, doing the same thing day in, day out. So having the same calories every single day, have, doing the same exercises, the same yeah. intensity every day, day in, day out for months on end, yep. and expecting something to change. Mm-hmm. So your body is very good at adapting. So the whole, your body's whole um, uh, point of existence is to keep you alive. Yeah, and it will do anything. It can to do that. So if it sees that you're eating the same thing every day, same yeah. calories, doing the yeah. same, your body will adapt to that and your metabolism will adapt to that. 
So it's not going to, you're not going to continue to burn. You have to continually challenge your body, challenge your um, metabolism. So have days where you have high carbs or high calories, sorry, mm-hmm. and then have low calorie days. Um, change up your exercise. So do some high intensity and yeah. then do some steady state cardio. Mm-hmm. Say so then do some resistance training, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. So um, that's a really common thing. Not you know someone's under the um, care of say a trainer, less mm-hmm. likely to. Yes, but if they're trying to do it on their own. I do see these things very well, commonly. It's funny. We were just talking before we recorded about running and getting used to running. We yeah. were talking with, with Matt who's behind the camera. And we are talking about running and, and, and I remember my days of running. I started running in my 30s mm. and I remember my goal was to run this 5K fun run that was at the gym there. And I remember when I finished running the 5Ks, I almost was felt like I was dying. Yeah. And it was like I ran five kilometres and it's like, you know, now we were talking a bit before about running a marathon, which is 42 kilometres, and that mm. was hard. Yeah. But now, like this morning I ran, it was only 8Ks, mm. but 5Ks is barely worth getting out of bed for for me now because yeah. in, in the past running 5Ks I would have burnt way more calories, struggled way more, and now yeah. I can do 5Ks. Even now I can do 5Ks yeah. in my sleep. Exactly. And when I was really fit at running, 5Ks would be like, now yeah, I've start to, you know, that's my warm-up done. Mm. It's seriously, you're right, it adapts to it. And mm. so if you're going to the gym and doing the same weights mm. and you're getting stronger, those weights are going to become easier. That's right. And so, you know, doing the same thing mm. is is not a good thing. You've got to challenge yourself. You've got to yeah. step it up, step it down, step it over sideways, do all the – I'm a big fan of that too. Yeah. yeah. I can swim K and a half quite easily. Yes. But, you know, there, there are people who go to the pools that do 400 metres and they're exhausted at the end of it. Mm. And for them that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, all about adaptation. So you've got to continually challenge your body. Yeah. And and going for like like the, the, the Grant Hackett's from the old days, on, I know Grant, mm. um, you know, he, he's – the 1500 meter specialist mm. and he would train he would do like like six kilometers in a session yeah. now if i did six kilometers i'd burn way more calories than him because i'd be there all freaking day doing that yeah exactly. you know he'd do it in a little hour or two session you know yeah. what i mean yeah. and so absolutely you're absolutely correct on that one yeah so i just wanted to get those out of the way yeah. because they're things that people think oh yeah but but 